believe we can still win this war. It may not look like it right now, but tell yourself, I can still win this war. Go ahead and make it personal. But there you go, baby. You make that thing personal. Make it personal, Morgan. I can still win this war. Yeah, as long as I got God on the inside, anything's possible. I can still win this war. So if a man think of in his heart, so is he. I can still win this war. I can do all things through Christ. I can still win this war. God is my refuge. I can still win this war. I can win this war. It ain't over till God says it's over. And as long as there's breath in my life, there's possibility. And when I'm connected to God, that possibility can become a reality. I've seen God work miracles, signs, and wonders all my life. He ain't going to stop on me because he know I love him. I trust him with all my heart, all my mind, and all my soul. There's no reason for God not to come to my rescue. But he says we got to do our part. We got to stand. You asking God to do everything. God said, I'll help you fight your battle, baby, but you got to stand. I can't fight the battle while you running. I can't write it while you, you, you. Excuses are a sign of the incompetent. Those who use excuses seldomly excel at anything in life. Somebody say excuses. You won't excel in life. When excuses are a part of your genre every day you, you want to excel you always got an excuse God said I don't need your I'm sick and tired of your excuses God said your excuses are not a part of me I didn't make excuse when I sent my son down last week and y'all went and hid eggs and dressed your kids up on the outside and they still riding on the inside I, you got your hair fixed for church last week I didn't say nothing I'm still standing my son still died but look at you now you hiding you're running. You're scared. And it's okay to be scared. But fight anyway. Fight, fight anyway. It's okay to be in a dark place. Start swinging anyway. If I swing long enough, if it get close to me, I'm going to connect with it. I might not knock it out, but I'm going to connect with it. Devil, you got to go. Keep messing with me, devil. I'm finna go into prayer in such a way, I'm going to make your head spin. You, your demons, your soothsayers, your witches, your legions, and everything else got to go. I ain't running no more. You can't kill me because you didn't make me. I wish I had somebody this morning who said, you know what? It's war time for me. I'm glad I came to church today. I'm glad I'm watching it on TV this morning because it's war time for me. Easter was the opening for my war. From this point on, I'm a fight to the death. But we got to make sure we know how to fight. We got to make sure we understand what God has already equipped us with so we can fight the good fight. Not a faith, but attacking. See, that's the problem. See, let me talk to you. When we get saved, we become saved. Everybody come to the altar and hug you. Shake your hand, and they, they, they lift you up in front of the church, and you're like, I found a family. They love me at the church. And nobody even never comes and tells you when you get saved, be ready because all hell finna break loose. We, we never say that, Sister Tammy. We, we never come and say, baby, I love you, and I'm so glad. Take my number down. You're going to need to call me at some point. Come on. Come on now. We need more people like that, though, that's going to say, I'm glad, brother, that you joined. And God has sent me to connect with you because in the next seven days, you're going to need me because just like God was up here and, and the angels rejoiced, the demons were back there getting teed off. They trying to figure out how they can attack you. So anything in your house that's not bolted down, anything in your life that's not screwed in, go ahead and get ready to put a grasp on it because they're going to try to uplift it and take it away. They're going to try to make a hurricane or a tornado come in your life. We don't tell them the truth. We just tell everybody, you know, being saved is a fairy tale. And that is pretty and it's daffodils and lemon cake and punch. Anything but that. Father, we thank you for this word that's getting ready to go forth in these few minutes. You've already started. And we give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. Tell a neighbor, we can win this race.
We can win this war. I'm sorry, we can win this war. We can win this war. Tell somebody till they believe it, we can win this war. Or you ought to point to them with some vengeance and say, we can win this war, Morgan. I don't care what it is, we can win this war. My head is lifted high. My spirit is uplifted. We can win this war. What the devil meant for evil, God has turned it around for somebody's good. We can win this war. The devil can't keep me down. I have to want to lay down. I ain't saying he can't knock me down, but he can't keep me down. Paul talks about what it's like to be totally girded in God. And you ask the question, why must I be girded in God when I'm saved of God? I have to be girded because I still have responsibility. There's an expectation that comes with being saved. There's there's expectation come with being a child of the Most High God. You don't just go free. Yeah, the ransom has been paid by his son, Jesus Christ, and we celebrated that last week, and we get all that. But now it's your turn. What you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to start fighting back? Or are you going to continue to just get inside your own feelings and, and quit on God periodically and then keep quitting on God? Because once you do it too much, it becomes habitual. Now quitting becomes a habit, and now you start becoming accustomed to quitting more than you do fighting. Your immune system is built more to quit than to fight. And any time you get in that place, that's a bad predicament to be in because now your family suffers. Because you're not afraid, you are afraid to fight. You're afraid to fight, and even if you take some licks in the fight, you're still afraid because somebody says, she got hit. Yeah, she got hit, but did you see what she did to that devil? You see what she did to that thing? You see how she overcame that? Yeah, she, got, she heard no four times, and on the fifth time, she tried again. By now, everybody quit on her, but she went for the fifth time, and then this time, they said yes for the job, but they said yes for the opportunity. Or they said, yes, you have been approved. Yes, it ain't over because you hear no. No, that's just God want to see. Will you fight for me? Uh, what are you made of? You, you cannot allow your relationship to, with God to be categorized off of one incident in your life. If you do that, then you've lost. Because the punchline has to be, regardless of what happened, one eye open, one eye closed, all my hair cut off, whatever it is, I'm still fighting. Barefooted and whatever, I'm still fighting. I don't know the way out, but I'm going to keep fighting until I find it. Yeah, I'm not going to quit, and I'm not going to sit there and feel sorry for myself, and I want people to have a funeral for me while my, my heart's still beating. I still have a pulse. Why are y'all burying me now? Why are you coming and saying, girl, don't worry about it. I don't need that no more. I'm sorry. I have, I have matured from that. I got bigger problems because I have a bigger faith. And it's a new world for me, but, but I'm going to get through this too because I know that regardless of how big the world is, the equation is the same, that God is still a good God, and you still have to have this faith because the faith gives you the endurance to fight. Oh, it gives me the endurance to fight. Real lions like to hunt. Real lions like to hunt. They, they, they like to hunt. They, they love to hunt. Now, the reason they like to hunt is because they love the process. Real lions love the process. I don't care what's going on with a lion. When they, they can be playing with each other, two or three of them out there just dancing around, pouncing on each other, and, and, and they can hear for like four or five miles away. And when they hear something familiar that, that comes as food, they, and this amazing quote, how they stop, they stop playing immediately. They, then all of them be, It's a process. I got to hear it first, and then when I hear it, then I can go towards it. They don't run from it. They run to it. Because the only way they're going to feed the pride and eat is they got to go kill. The only way we're going to keep the kingdom of heaven always being uh, continuing to recruit is we're going to have to kill. We got to have the same mentality as these lions. We got to love the process. When you're down and out and things ain't going your way, love the process. You got to say God is up to something. 
I don't know what it is, but God's going to show me what it is. Why my business isn't working? Why I haven't been discovered yet? Why me? Why me? Why me? Everybody, why me? God say, enjoy the process, baby. Your, your learning comes from the process, not the pride. We, we want the prize, Sister Tammy, but we don't like the process. We know exactly what we want, but we don't like thinking about how we're going to get there. And then when we get tired because it haven't worked yet, we go and tell ourselves, maybe it wasn't meant. The devil is a lie. If God told you he's not a renegger, he's not an Indian giver, he don't give it and take it back. What it is, you just, you just stop. You start quitting. Because you don't have on the right armor. You out there fighting, the, fighting the Satan with some flip-flops on. You can't fight Satan with flip-flops on. And, God, and he just told us in the text, put on the whole armor of God. You out there with a T-shirt on and some shorts and flip-flops. He whipping you up and down. Yeah, a T-shirt with all kind of holes in it like your spirit. You're not solidified. So, so what happens? You, you don't get the prize. Some of us just want to go to heaven. But we don't like the process of what we have to go through to get to heaven. Because we say it's too hard, and it's meant to be hard. It's meant to be hard to get things worthwhile. Something eternal should be hard. Something that you're going to get should be tough. So he says to get to me, you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to fight. I'm not going to just allow Satan to just totally be withdrawn from you because I got to see what you're made of. And one thing I know about women, a real woman, she don't want no man who can't fight for I find it very disturbing when an altercation sets out and the woman jumping up before the man. He should be the one out there taking the brunt of this. She, but now she should really be the helpmate now. Like, you know, you'd say when you want her to cook and, and wash dishes, now she's the helpmate. But now when it's time to fight, now you put her out front. Now you become the helpmate. No, you got to be the, the lion in this. Yeah, but, but it doesn't work that way. It, it really doesn't because... We love what we call showtime. We want to really be with Christ in showtime. You know what I'm talking about, singing in the choir at the church when you ain't going to shout to your friends, get that so everybody can see you. You're going to start speaking in tongues right before the preacher come up so you can get an audience. That's showtime Christianity. Y'all know anybody know showtime Christians? They, 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 they put on, you know, when you got now the pastor's anniversary and he, a lot of people going to be there and now they come to the church. You ain't seen them in four months. They come to this church sharp as a tack, suited and booted from the, from the sole of their feet to the crown of their head and come up and try to sit on one of the front rows. Them showtime Christians. Showtime Christians don't have a chance against them demons because they're one. They're one. When you're not of God, he say be either hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, he's going to spew you out. When you're one of those, you're, you're not God. You, you're fancy. You're fancy amp. You're, you're fancy demon. You look the part. You're camouflaged. In Christianity, but you really serve Satan. But we still have a chance to win this war. We, we can still win this war. You can't ever praise God when you're by yourself. You only praise God when people are around. What is your true relationship with God? You only read your Bible when people have to constantly remind you. You read your word? Brother, you reading your word? How your word coming with you? What's the last thing you read? Oh, the pastor preaching. Brother, it's Friday. You ate a meal. I, I promise you ate every morning you got up. You ate physical food. But you didn't read your word. How are you girding yourself up? How are you preparing and training yourself? I know the Bible speaks a lot about Greek mythology because a lot of things took place over in that region with with the Olympics and all that stuff. So a lot of metaphors in the Bible come from the Greek Olympics and all that, and how they train their warriors and how they eat right and how they set them aside from all the other citizens because they're preparing to run. Well, God do the same. God equips you for this, this Olympics that we're running, and our enemy is Satan. He equips us for those who want to be equipped, for those who are ready to fight. And say, I'm not, People who can really fight are people who are not afraid to take a hit. Seriously, I learned how to fight by getting beat up early. 
I did. I, I did. So to Tammy, I got beat up early, and, and that helped me learn how to fight. And then from that point on, I, has, I, I built a legacy because I knew what it felt like to get hit. So once I know what it feels like to get hit, I'm not afraid to get hit again because I've endured getting hit before. Oh, my God. I, I've been hit before. So no matter what you try to do to me and my household, it's probably already happened before. So you can't beat me with that. I'm telling you now, bring it on, brother. Bring it on. Yeah, I got something for you today. Bring it on, devil. I see now. I have my whole family, children, and all on our knees praying on you. I open up every window and door in my house and cast this spirit. In fact, y'all go open up all these doors and windows in the house. Put that gospel on. We finna pray these demons out of here. We finna fight. I ain't scared of you. I can't go no further back. I'm gonna fight my way out of this. My family going to see what I'm made of. They're going to see the fiber in which they were born into. My mama is a fighter. My daddy is a fighter. My older brother is a fighter. Therefore, I'm going to be a fighter for Christ. I'm fighting too. Somebody say, put them up. What type of legacy are you leaving for your children? Do they see you fight any spirits or is it just your boyfriend? Wonder some of these people here, all they can fight is their boyfriend or their significant other. Now they'll tear a mud hole in them, cuss him up and down, but they won't speak in tongues to Satan or his demons or his amps or his soothsayers. They won't say nothing to him. They'll ignore him. He's the real enemy. Tell somebody that's the enemy. Oh, that's the enemy right there. That's, that's the enemy right there. That's, that's the enemy right there. Old people, you can say this, Mother Ann. You can say it with me. I'm a soldier. In the army of the Lord. I'm not a singer for the a background singer for the Commodores or Earth, Wind, and Fire. They come and go. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Uh, back to the text. Back to the text. I'm got to get in this. Got to, got to get in this. I was reading something about our military because I love our military. My wife will tell you I'm a military guru. My, my daughter is a history major, so we constantly have conversations on our economic system and our war and, 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 and how our military is. And what makes this country so powerful? Politically and through defense. What, what makes this country so powerful? Well, one thing the soldiers do in all of our branches, the first thing they do after they sign up and are approved to come in, they don't let you come in if you're healthy. If you got some type of illness, you won't get into the military, not because they don't love you. They would love to have you, but, but you're not putting up what we need. When, when the time gets tough, your body won't be able to withstand. Yeah, just like Christians, there, there are a lot of Christians who want to come in, but they're at the point where their body won't withstand. Their physical body hadn't been built enough through prayer and supplication so that they'll be strong enough so God will look at you and say, I cannot use you over here. You go back over there and go and build your immune system up so you can come back and pass boot camp. Every military branch goes through boot camp because the boot camp readies them for war. It, re it readies them for war. Now, so, so, what do soldiers learn in boot camp? Because I said, let me, let me see if I can make a parallelism between being in God's boot camp and being in our military's boot camp, since our military is the, is the most powerful military in the world. And it said this right here, that one of the things that goes into the military in boot camp, they teach them teamwork. They teach them, Sister Tammy, teamwork. Why is it that the church hadn't learned teamwork. Why is it that, that we're not making sure that my sister, I hadn't seen you in a long time, sister, quote, I don't care where you've been, I'm just glad to see you back. That's what they teach in boot camp. They teach teamwork in the military. Teamwork would mean regardless of what takes place, regardless of what occurs, we going to work through this thing together. They learn in the military, you never leave a person behind, Jesus. You never leave a, a brother or a sister behind in the military, but in the church, we don't even speak to people to get them with us. So we leave everybody behind. But we want to call ourselves Christians. What uniform are you wearing? Because it ain't the uniform of the, of the Lord. 
And with the mindset you got, it ain't the red, white, and blue either. Teamwork is one. Now, they said the next thing that goes on in boot camp is discipline. Oh. Discipline. You have to be disciplined in the military. If you don't even, if you're not disciplined, you don't make it through boot camp. You're not considered a soldier until you get out of boot camp. So they try to teach you all these characteristics and things in boot camp so before you go out there and mess up something in the war. This is what the church is for. The church is to teach you and be intentional on what it teaches you so when you go outside these walls of the church, you are prepared better for the war. One of them things is how to be disciplined. Are you reading your word every day? Are you praying at night? Are you studying to show yourself approved? Or are you go to church when you want to? Or did you half read your Bible only when hell breaks loose in your life? Be honest with me because I've been there before. I didn't really study the Bible sometime back in the day until all hell broke loose in my life. Then I prayed like never before. And God said, well, if you can do it now, why you can't do it when all good is? Like how Paul said, I'm, I'm, I've learned to be obeys or abides. I've learned how to trust God in spite of either what I'm doing good or doing bad. It doesn't matter. I still love God. Why? That's the kind of thing they look for in the military, Morgan. You have to be disciplined. Yeah, you got, you got to be different. Another thing that they teach you in the military is how to march. I said march. They said, yeah, they teach you how to march. That's what I said too, Minister, uh, Minister Titch. I said it to all. Like, mm, march. They say, yes, march, because we have to make sure everybody that's walking with us synchronize. We got to make sure everybody that's a champion, that champion for Christ, saying the same thing. We got to make sure everybody that champions for Christ have the same role. We got to make sure that everybody that, that champion for Christ ain't none of them ever scared. If you're a champion for Christ and you ain't never scared, you ought to stand up and sit back down one time and say, I feel that. Yeah, they, 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 they teach you how to march together. And the way the church come together is we become unified. When we become unified, we become bonafide. And when we become bonafide, can't no devil in hell stop us. But we got to come together first. God keep you in a holding pattern until you get it. And if you never get it, that's what you got, where you are. If you're at your house and you're looking at where you are, it's something that needs to change in your march. With everybody in your house, make sure everybody in your house on the same page. Make sure they all saying yes and amen. Make sure everybody in your house speaking positive and not negative. Make sure everybody in your house showing love even when it ain't there. They still showing love. Make sure everybody in your house praying together that's so y'all can stay together. Make sure everybody in the prayer reading the word together so you can have strength in your house. Your house is tore up from the floor because the house ain't on one page. Y'all ain't marching to the same beat. So y'all bumping into each other marching, looking crazy. The music is playing and the Bible is there, but they bumping into each other. They can't even get it right. They can't march right because they ain't on the same page. But our military, who's the number one military in the world, say you have to learn to march before you can graduate boot camp also. And the last thing they said, and we're going to have to stop here today. I got three points I got to get to. We won't get to them today. But the point that they said in the military the last thing they learn how to do is shoot the gun. The last thing they learn how to do is the weaponry. It seemed like they learn how to do the weaponry first, learn how to shoot first. But I thought about that thing and say, you give them a gun first and they don't know how to march. You give them a gun first and they're not disciplined. You give them a gun first and they don't know how to work as a team, then they might shoot you. You don't have what you desire of God yet because there are some other things in the mainstream line that you haven't conquered yet to shoot the gun. They teach them how to shoot the gun last in boot camp. Yeah, you, 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 you shooting blanks. You shooting blanks. You're not strong enough. Your, your finger isn't strong enough to pull the trigger because it's not strong enough to turn the page in the Bible. If, if it's long, see, once it gets strong enough, well, you can do this. Uh huh. And do it. Now, now it's strong enough to pull a trigger. Okay, I got some. That's okay. We, we Cleveland Avenue today, baby. We South Side today, but that's all right. I love the South Side of Atlanta. That's where I'm from. South Side, that's where we're from. But, but it's the truth. 
You can't, pay, you can't change the page. You can't pull the trigger. You don't deserve the weaponry of God because you won't use it right. You'll do just like you do when you lie to yourself and say, if I had this much money, I'll do this, 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 this. And you say everything except first pull the trigger on paying tithes and offerings. That's why you ain't pull the trigger. He ain't pull that you pull the trigger because you have proven to God that you're not disciplined enough to be able to shoot the gun yet. He want to bless you. Dean, but they ain't disciplined enough yet. They're not disciplined enough yet to shoot the gun. And so it makes them get to a place to where they want to do what a lot of people do, quit. And in the military, they call that AWOL. Dishonorable discharge. And when you get a dishonorable discharge, what they tell people even in the corporate world, whether it's going to be a janitor or something else, you a quitter. You quit on your country unless you had a, 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 a medical issue. Then they, they'll give you a, a, a some kind of other discharge. But, but I'm talking about those cats who just quit. I, I, I'm tired. I, I got tired. I can't do this no more. Man, your life depends on it and others. Yeah, somebody's life depends on every word that, that come out of my mouth. Somebody's life depends on those guys who are out there on the front line for us. And I know right now they're not being taken care of like they should. But I know God got a reward for them in heaven. Because we do not treat our military right. But it shows us that you have to serve God for God. Even when it seems like God has forgotten you, he hasn't forgotten you. He's gracing you. He's still gracing you. And so I'm fighting for God. Regardless of what rewards I get while I'm fighting, I know in the end I shall win. That, that's what the military says now. So they do this teamwork, discipline, uh, march, and they handle weapons. It's demanding. They said they wanted to be physical dean and they wanted to be mental because most people break down from the mental capacity of what takes place in their life not the physical i can't thought i can't fathom the thought of how i'm gonna come up with this and i got to have it to move forward i can't fathom the thought minister see how i'm gonna get this for my kid how my child gonna go to college I got them two years apart. That, that's a lot of kids and a lot of money. Your kid in the seventh grade now, and the other one's there stepping behind him, and you look and saying, God, I got more. And God said, yeah, y'all laid and played. Y'all had a good time. Now it's time to be responsible. <laughs> Mr. T said, I did. I laid and played. But you, but you think about that. You, you think about that because mentally it's tougher to come back than physically. Mentally, it's, it's tough. People will deal with you if, if you have a limb messed up, if I got a spring knee or something. People will help you. But when you crave, when they say you crazy and mental, people don't want to get around you. They, oh, oh they, she crazy. It's serious mentally. They say in the military, you will experience stress. Boot camp is designed to test your limits. It's not designed to be pretty. That's why they let you talk to your parents the first 24 hours you're there. Then after that, everything go away. And I like that. It has to be tough because they protect us. They, they protect us, Dean, so it got to be tough. So I'm glad that the military is tough. And I'm glad that God makes it tough because I don't want an atheist in a foxhole with me. I don't want somebody with me that when I need prayer, they look at it saying, well, how pastor need prayer? I need a, a church that'll say, pastor need prayer. We finna get together and pray now. What's wrong with pastor? It don't matter. He need prayer. Get your tail to the altar and let's fight like the Dickens for our leader. I don't have to be nosy. I don't know what he's going through. It don't matter. We just finna go out here and fight. You think the angels ask God, why you sending us out here in the brigade? No, they just ready to roll. Yeah, some of y'all at the house, you know your spouse need prayer and you won't even pray for him. You laugh at him and look at him, look at their weak time. Now, now look at what he's saying. Now look at him. He over there crying. Now look at that baby. And God said, look at you. You help, mate. You're nothing more than a decayed woman. You'd rather insult your husband than pray for him and move your feelings out the way. See, that, that's boot camp stuff right there. If both of y'all went through spiritual boot camp together, as soon as, he, soon as she even get a sniff or a wither, Maria, that's something wrong, she praying. 
She might not say nothing, Maria, but she'll wait till he go on to work or whatever. She'll say, baby, let me get in this room and get on my knee. And if I'm truly connected with God, the Bible declared that the Holy Ghost will bring to my remembrance what it is I need to pray for him or her for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we can win this war. We can still win this war. Now, I ain't going to finish this today, but I want y'all to keep that in mind that you can win this war. You, you, there's nothing too hard for God. You know what to expect and how to become prepared in the military. It, 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 the hardest part of boot camp, it, this, and I'm going to finish with this. The hardest part of boot camp is the imminent battles that you have within. So, Sister Tammy, that's what they said. The hardest battles in boot camp, when you are tired and fatigued, they say your hardest battle is the intimate piece of what's been inside of you, keeping it morale up, keeping yourself motivated, keeping yourself inspired. That's what it says, the imminent battles that must be won within toughest part of boot camp. And whatever you're doing within life, the toughest part is the imminent battles that you're fighting within. That's the toughest part. Once you get past that in boot camp, you graduate to a place of standard. You graduate then to a place of standard. And they call this place Semper Paratus. Semper Paratus. It's a Latin phrase meaning always ready. <laughs> always. They, you go through all this boot camp not to get a check. You go through this boot camp not to have an early retirement at 38 if you go right after college. You go through all this simple pertitis so that you're always ready. You're, you're always ready for what? War. That's what makes our military the strongest military in the world. We're always ready. They said there's no war we can't get ready for in 30 days. No war that we can't be totally equipped for in 30 days. Who else can do that? No war. We have to have the same mindset with Christ. There's no war that Satan can bring at me within 24 hours. Whatever he bring, I feel like I can win it. Now, I understand some of these, these wars feel like marathon, but you can still win it. I know it gets tough, man. I, I really do. I'm not, I'm not one of those, you know, phallus preachers that, oh, everything's going to be all right. Everything's not going to be all right. There's going to be some tough times in your life. That's the only way you can build your faith. That's the only way you can build your trust. You have to trust God, and you have to trust God in your toughest times of war. And next, next, well, yeah, next time I'm up, we'll, we'll talk about who you're fighting. That's going to be the best part of this. Who are we fighting? What do we look like? What are the expectations? What are their antics? How, what are their tactics? How do they come at me? And why? Tune in next week. This thing just getting good. This right here going to bless you. Put your hands together. God bless You've you. just had an experience with champions, and we are so glad that you tuned in today. Let's continue to honor God through our commitment to give. There are four ways to give. You can give online via Cash App at dollar sign Champions for Christ. Next, you can give online at www.championsforchristim.org. Lastly, you can give during service or on our mobile app available in the Apple and Google Play stores. Please be sure to tune in each and every week to our online broadcast. Encourage others to tune in with you. Remember, we are champions because we are champions for Christ.